Okay, so we're on live on Facebook. Uh, again, tonight's shir, I believe, is Lil Nishmas Haisha Shifra, Basha Bicheskel, and the shir is sponsored by uh, David Kutner and family. And uh, Akiva, I don't know if you heard, and Mr. First would like to sponsor the shir for Monday, the broadcast for Monday, which which is uh, Lil Nishmas, his mother. Um, let me see if I remember. Chana Bas. Shmuel Mayer. Shmuel Mayer. And the Okay, so we're all the way at the bottom of Hayman Bays. And till now, we were involved in child's play, discussing sukkah and other, other things. Now we're getting into the hard, rough and tumble sukkahs of Ervin. Zokta Gemar. Omar Abchanin Barova. Abchanin Barova said, Omar Av in the name of Rav. Movui Shenifrats. Mitzidai, a movi that the side of the movi broke open, and let me just focus on the picture here. So this would be the front of the movi. So this is not relevant to our question right now, and this would be the side of the movi. So there was a breach in the wall at the side of the movi. That is the question that Rav is discussing. On so both says, sides, it shows over there, or just on one side. So, in this picture, it's showing a breach in the front, and it's showing a and breach on the side. On the side. So, we're discussing the breach on the side. Let's make believe there's no breach here. There's only a breach on the side, and that's what Rav is going to discuss. So, Zok to Hele It depends Rav, how big the breach is. That's correct. So, that's what the Gemara is going to get into. So, Mavui that was breached with Sidai Be'eser is is as long as the breach is not bigger than 10 Amis, that movi you could still carry in that movi. The significance of 10 Amis is that once it's bigger than 10 Amis, we're afraid most people, rather than go through the front entrance of the movi, are going to start using that breach to go in and out. And therefore, they're going to lose the whole hecker of the lechi or the koira that's at the entrance because they're now using another entrance that doesn't have that that signal, the signal of a lechi or the kair. But Meroishoi, if it broke in the front, like we saw in the picture, Bidalid, four tfachim is enough that uh, that it'll break it. Rashi says, Meroishoi, show you roch of chafama. Let's say the mavoi was 20 amas wide. Vesos my eser amas, and we had to block 10 of the 20 of us opening, kid did not like we learned in our Mishnah of Aruch of Mayesu Yemayit. The maximum width of the entrance of a Mavoy is 10 Amis. So you had to build a wall to partially block the entrance into the Mavoy. And in that wall, Benifritza, Pirza, Ba'isis Stima. In that wall, the Pirza broke. So if we go back to the picture, here is the front face of the Mavoy. Let's say it's more than 10 Amis. So they filled it in with a wall, and the wall that they filled it in with was breached, the front wall. So Zokt Rav, if it's in the front, it's in the front, it's only Dalat Vachim. So Frek Gemara, Ma'i Shno Mitzidai Be'eser, why is it that we give him 10 Amis if the breach is on the side wall? And why do we say that it's it's not considered a broken wall? Da'amar Pischahu, we say it's not a breach, we say it's a doorway. A side doorway, and therefore we don't consider the wall breached. Well, then may Roshinami in the front face of the Mavi name a Pischahu. Why don't you say the same thing? Omar Afuna Bereid Abishua, Kagon Shinifritz Bekaren Zavis. In fact, the, when, when Rav said that the Roshai, the limit is four, that's oh. if the corner broke. The Pischa Bekaren Zavis lay of the Inchi. People do not make doorways on corners. So let's have a look at what this is referring to. We have a beautiful picture of it. The corner, the corner where the front face of the Mavi and the side wall of the Mavi intersect, that's where there was a breach. That breach, Zot Rav, it's only Fort Falk, I mean, not Ten Amis. Because you can only say Ten Amis if it's something that someone would theoretically would make into a doorway. But nobody puts a doorway on the corner and therefore that would not be considered a Pesach. Nowadays, we have many, I know apex cleaners on Bathurst, the doorways on a, on a diagonal. But then that was not a derech. Now the first question that we would raise when we say that people don't make doorways on diagonals is yesterday, 
we actually learned uh, the minimum mobile size we said was four tvachim, and we said because that's the doorway issue, and there was a discussion that the doorway would be on a diagonal. I don't know if anybody remembers these two pictures, but the Gemara on the Fehmer Alev wanted to suggest that the doors were on a diagonal because you needed to have a door that was four tvachim that would fit in the span of four tvachim, and the Gemara said the only way to do that is if you have a diagonal door. So here the Gemara is saying people don't make diagonal doors, yet on the Afe, the Gemara says pretty clearly that they did make a diagonal door. So Rashi said, I mean, Toysvis addresses it with a simple little line. And he says, It's not the norm to do, and therefore a breach, we won't by default say it acts as a doorway. But But if somebody actually did what was not the norm and built a doorway and a door in a diagonal, have a shop or Pesach. Of course, that is considered the door. Like we learned the Pesach. So of course, if someone does it, it'll be a door. You won't say both the title. But if it's just, just a breach, we won't by default say it acts as a doorway because that's not a typical thing to do. So to does, it, does, it, does it mean that it's always like that or that it can change if the minic changes? I guess it could change if the minic changes. But since it was not the norm, at least in those days, that's why Rav made that ruling. Omar Afuna Bereda Bishua. Could you never speak of his The Pisco became his office. Leo Dinchi. For Afuna Omar, Afuna said, Echoze, Echoze Barbo. So Afuna is arguing on Rav and he's being super from. He's saying the maximum breach allowed in the side of a movie or in the front of a movie is all a fort for him. Now, Rav Chan Barava, if you remember, was the Imam the Omar just on the bottom of Amar Beis that we just learned who quoted Rav. And Rav Huna told Rav Chan Barava, Don't argue with me. Don't, don't quote Rav as arguing with me. I'm telling you the maximum hole allowed in a wall is Fort Tvachim. So don't tell me that Rav argues and says that as long as it's not on the corner, you're entitled up to a breach of ten amis. It's not true because of a story. The Rav Ikloi Lida Macharia, he showed up to this city of Macharia and they approached him with the Shaila. They had a breach in the wall and it was for Tvachim. It was not ten amis. And Rav Paskind that the movi you may not carry in that movi until you fix the breach in the wall. The Ovid of the Kavasi. So don't quote Rav as being so makel to allow a breach in the wall of Tanamis, because I'm telling you an actual story that occurred where Rav actually passed the movi when the breach was all of Fort Tvachim. How much is Fort Tvachim? How many inches approximately? It's about 24 inches. How can a person get, get through a 24 inch crack in a wall? Yes, yes. Four Tvachim is the minimum Depends size who. doorway. You have to be skinny, not me, not you. That's right. You know, I, I've been in doorways that I was able to get in, but then I couldn't get out. That happens too. Okay, it's a good way to lose weight. You squeeze into a tight doorway, and then and then you, you can't get out until you uh, until you lose weight. Amale, so Reb Hanan answered, don't prove to me what Rav's sakalocha was because of that one story. That one story was an exemption. Rav Bika Motza, the God of Bergeder. Rav saw, Zok Rashi, that in that city in Mecharia, that Ame Haratzim, Hoyu, they were people who were not serious about their Yiddishkeit, who mezalzalim be mitzvahs, and they were lax in their shmirs and mitzvahs, and therefore he needed to show them the severity of the situation. He had to be very serious with them to hold on to, to, to teach them about the choimer and inyan of Ervit. Like someone who is who puts a gate around an open and unsheltered field in the meadows to watch it. So there's such a concept where a rov will pass on the chumra kineged alocha because he needed to show that things were serious. Um, are there any Bachim here? I don't think so. 
Moish, Moish from Detroit. Is your son with us tonight? Nope. Okay. So when I was when I was in Lakewood, I took a rabbinical training course. So people who who got smicha in yeshiva, it wasn't only Lakewood. There's some boys from Scranton. There were some boys from New York. Uh, under under Beryl Wine's guidance, they made a program to train practical rabbanim in practical the practical aspects of, of being a rav, and then they were going to uh, set you up in the community, and they were going to subsidize your salary in the community to help you start a new rabbanus. And the deal was that they'll set you up within a thirty minute drive of a fully established community. So I entered thinking that maybe I could do something in Hamilton, which is within 30 minutes of a fully established community, such as Toronto. But after the program was over, they told me, no, the fully established community is Hamilton. We'll find you something within 30 miles of Hamilton. And that I thought maybe wouldn't work out so good for me. Anyway, in that, in that class, Rabbi David Cohn once gave us a shear on being matter birth control. And he said, he said, if a guy calls me to rubber stamp a Hector because he takes it for granted, that's no problem. Then he drives him crazy. He asks him a million questions and he says, I could only give you a Hector for a month at a time. And you got to check in every month. But if, so he says, some Yeshiva guys are so uncomfortable asking the Shaila, they're so, they think they're, they're being Michal Shabbos. Uh, that's Rabbi Shaila. Uh, my wife, she's not feeling well. Uh, the doctors. Uh, uh. So then I said, don't worry, you can take birth control as long as you want. He, I, don't even, I don't even give him a hard time. So, so you see that concept that a rov has to know when someone is taking it very seriously, he can back off. But if a rov sees that things are very lax, then he has to be very strict. Amr of Nachem by Yitzchak. Amr of Nachem by Yitzchak. Kavase de Rav Huna Mistafra. I like Rav Huna Shita, L'chumra, that the maximum breach allowed is Fort Vachum. The Itmar, we learned a mach like this. Mavi Okum. If you have a Mavi Okum, there's different shilas, there's different shitas in what a mavi akum is, but I'm going to use uh, Rashi's shot. A mavi akum's of Rashi is a mavi that has a 90 degree turn in it. So there's an entrance to the Rosh Hashanah here, it turns 90 degrees, and then there's another entrance to the Rosh Hashanah. So this is called a mavi akum. There's an opening here, there's an opening here, and here in the corner is where the two mavis join. So a mavoy the Gemara wants to know what's the shalom of that. And the reason why that's problematic is because it's open on both ends to Rosh Hashanah. Our normal mavoy is open on one end to Rosh Hashanah, and then it's walled on three sides. Here, the back end of each mavoy is actually open to another mavoy that actually will give you access to Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> that's why that's more stringent than the standard mavoy. So let's see what we have over here. Mavoy Akum. Rav Omar, Tayrosoi came foolish. We look at it like it's open end to end to Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, what were what would the restrictions be? So Krashi, Umovi Hama foolish Rosh Hashanah, a movi that's opened on both ends to Rosh Hashanah. Sorech Tsuras Pesach Mikan. Now you can't just have a lechi and kaira. One side has to have a Tsuras Pesach, meaning two lechis and a kaira on one side. The lechi oikaira mikan. And the other end, you would only need the standard, uh, the standard lechi or kaira that a standard mavi needs. Kidla, come on, like we're going to soon see in the Gemara. So afze, therefore, this mavi that goes that turns ninety degrees, sorech lishnei p'sochav the tzadrish sarabim lechi lachol ruach at either end, which is, means at the point where each end enters rishus sarabim, you need a standard lechi. But in addition to that, uva akmu misoi at that diagonal corner, tsorich <clears throat> pesach. You actually need a tsorich of pesach, two kurs and a lechi going over the corner where the two mavis intersect. The pilush shohum afulush lechaveroi. The fact that the two mavis are open to each other, havekim afulush lushus arabim. We treat it like it's open to lushus arabim. So this is more of a rudimentary picture. But Does it need a this is also? I'm sorry? Does it need a mezuzah also? Uh, if it is a tzuras of Pesach, I don't know. We know that a home requires a mezuzah, but I'm not sure if a mezuzah is required to the entrance of a chotzer. I don't know if a mezuzah is needed to the entrance of a chotzer. I think only to the entrance of a bias. Well, chasavta ma'al mezuzah, 
I'm not sure if Isha Recha means a Chatzar. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So Zok the Heilig Gemara. So Zok Rav Rav holds the Chumer that it's Kim of Foolish, and therefore on either outer end you need your Lachi or Koira, and in here in the center you need in a diagonal position where the two Mobis connect. You need two Lachis and a Koira. You need a full Tzuras Hapesach. That's what Rav holds. Shmuel Amar Lakula Teirasei Kesosum. It's like Sosum. So what do you need? So Rashi tells us the Insorich Bak Mimusay Klum. You don't need anything there. Ela Elo Oisin Lachi LePischam. The people who are going to use the Novi on one side going out to the Rishus Rabbim do their standard Lachi or Kaira. The Elo Oisin Lachi LePischam, and the other people do the same thing. Loy Matzurchinon Tzuras Hapesach. You do not require that Tzuras Hapesach like Rab required. Ela LePsochim Hamefuloshin Zekineged Zel Rishus Rabbim. If you have one movie that's open on both ends to a Rishus Rabbim, that's when you will need additional requirements, which the Gemara will discuss soon. But these two that meet at a 90 degree angle to each other need nothing at all. Rashi is another shot that you do need something, but let's stick to this shot of Rashi. So again, Rav Amr Terosik a foolish, meaning you will need an extra Tzuras Pesach with the two movies joined. Or Shmuel Amr Terosik Kesosim, all you need to do is deal with the uh, entrances to Rishus Harabim, but where the two Malvis meet requires no additional action. Am I asking now, exactly what are we discussing? This opening in the doorway, so this this diagonal where 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 someone is suggesting a tzuras a pesach. What? How wide is that? If that's wider, if this is wider than ten amos, frek to Gemara. Lema Shmuel, would Shmuel actually say it's like Sosum? It doesn't make sense to say that. So Rashi, the whole Lema Shmuel, Kesosim, the Niski, the Lechi, in fact, the Gemara, Otu Lechi, the Yosem Eser, the Mobu Sosum, Mimahani. In any Mobu, if it's wider than 10, it wouldn't work. So if you're going to suggest that this Mobu is wider than 10, how could Shmuel allow this to be without any remedy? You have to say that we're either 10 or less than 10 because 10 is the maximum width. The Ka'omar Rav, and by a mobile that was 10 open, he said, He said that once something is open by 10 hours, you have to put a doorway in this diagonal because this is open, it's 10 open, it's 10. Its, it's width is 10 wide. So what do you see from here? Alma Pirtus Movoi Mitsidoi Bidalit. You see clearly from here that the opening of a Movi that would pass a lit would be for Tvachim. Zok Rashi. Zok Rashi. Allah Beser. Alma Pirtus Stodin Lerav Barbo. You see, according to Rav, that the Pirtus of Stodin is Barbo. Because Rav said, Rav said that 10. Is foolish. So clearly, 10 is too big. A hole that's 10 is the problem. So it must be that Rav holds that the hole, the maximum hole allowed, is going to be less than 10. So here is a raya, Rafun is bringing a raya, that Rav agrees to me that a hole that's 10 is no good, and the hole has to be less than 10. Rav Khan and who did say over from Rav, that a hole up to 10, a breach up to 10 amis is still kosher. Shiny hosom, the kaboki barabim. The reason why, in this case, Rav said in this 90 degree movie, the reason why by in this 90 degree movie, Rav said that it's, it's come a foolish is because since it's such a big open space in the wall, people are walking through there. People are using it as an opening. And therefore, no one's using the regular openings anymore. And that's why Ralph said that there was a problem. But normally, normally up to 10 feet wouldn't be a problem. So to Gemara, bin Chalal, to Rafuna suffer, it must be that Rafuna holds, Afagav, the Loi Boki Barabim. Rafuna must hold that even if it's Loi Boki Barabim, even if it's a place, a breach that people aren't walking through, it's still going to be possible 
once it's more than four tvachim. Because Rav Huna was the one who said that maximum four tvachim under the same conditions that Rav said maximum ten amis. Where did Rav say maximum ten amis? If there's, if there's not a lot of people there. But if there's a lot of people walking through, even Rav agrees that ten amis is too much. But Rav Huna must agree that even if there's not too many people walking through it, where Rav is matir, there Rav Huna is machmer and says that that's too too big of a breach and the Mavi would be possible. Frek the Gemara, Maishna Midiravami Rivervasi. Why is Rav Huna Machmer on such an opening of 10? Why is it any better than what we learned from Rav Ami and Ravasi? Who was Rav Ami and Ravasi? We learned it a couple of lot ago. Darino El, in Miyesham Pas, Arba, Matir Pirza, Ad Eser. Remember, Rav Ami Ravasi said a couple of lot ago. Well, I'll, I'll actually get the picture because then we'll remember exactly what Rav Ami said. And they said that if there is some wall there, and here's the picture of that discussion, Rav Ami Nirbasi said that if on my side wall I had four tfachim of wall, then further on I'm allowed a breach of up to 10 amis. So Rav Ami Nirbasi clearly said that I am allowed a breach of up to 10 amis. So why is it that Rav Huna sees the need to argue on Rav Ami and Rav Asi. So to Gemara, Hasam Diki Gedudi. Rav Ami and Rav Asi only allowed a breach up to Ten Amis because the wall wasn't totally ground down to the floor. There were still chunks of wall at the floor level. It wasn't raised down to the floor. So there's still somewhat of an impedance, an impediment to walking across. And therefore, that breach is not considered more than a passage. But the, the machloikis between Rav Huna and Rav is when there's a breach in the in the wall that's that the floor is smooth and it's completely removed any debris. There, Rav Huna says four tvachim is the maximum, and Rav holds as long as a lot of people aren't using it, we still allow up to ten amas. So therefore, just to summarize what we've learned, is there's sort of three levels. There's one level where the wall is broken but not raised down to the ground. There's still some wall that's there towards the ground. There, everybody agrees you have up to a 10 ama breach before this becomes a problem. But if it's raised down to the ground and you can easily walk across it, if you can easily walk across it, everybody agrees the maximum is four tfachim. But if not, if not too many people are walking across it and everyone is still using the main entrances to the Mavoy, then there's a machloikis where Rav Huna holds maximum for Tvachim, and Rav, in the name of, and Hanan by Rav, said in the name of Rav, that then you would have up to 10 Amas. Zok to Heil Gedol Moraviter. Ton Rabban. Ketzad ma'arvin derech rishos harav. How would you make an Erev on a derech rishos harav? So let's see, let's see if we have a picture of that. And again, the article has a picture of it. And this is quite simple. It's one street that opens up on either end to a Rosh And this itself is a Rosh How could you make an Erev on a Rosh The Gemara is going to challenge it. Whoever said that you could make an Erev on a Rosh You're asking me, how could you? So you're taking it for granted that you could do it. Who said you could do that? But the Gemara is asking that question. How do I make an Erev on a Rosh Now, how do you define Rosh Hashanah? That's a very big mach like Rosh Hashanah. Rashi defines Rosh Hashanah as follows. Mashma Roch of Sheish Esrei Amma. Condition number one in order to be a Rosh Hashanah is that it must be 16 Amis wide. And we learned that from the Agolois in Mesech Shabbos, that the width of how the wagons were lined up and positioned to load up the Prussian from Mishkan. And it also has to be the Ir Shemitsuyim Ba Shishim Ribui. You need to have a, a street that 600,000 people would, would pass through it. Condition number two. And condition number three is the Ein Ba It doesn't have a wall. So how you reshus Rabbi Shlo Mechuvin Mishar Lishar Sheyem a foolish Doimel Digli Midbar. So basically, you had one main thoroughfare that ran through the city from one end to the other end, with no with no uh, doorways, with no anything. It was wide open. That is the Derech Reshus Rabbi that we're discussing. Toisvus argues on the six hundred thousand people rule, and says it could be a Reshus Rabbi even if it's not six hundred thousand people. And that has a huge, huge enough comedian nowadays because many of our streets, we don't consider Rosh Hashanah and we allow an Erev to be made on them um, because 
600,000 people don't travel over those streets. But according to Toysvis, if it has the width of 16 Amis, even if you don't have 600,000 people on it, it would be considered a Rishus Arabim, which would lead to great commerce and complication in our areas, because once a street is 16 Amis wide, it would be considered a Rishus Arabim, which you cannot make an error for. So Zakta Helik Gemara Vaitir. Well, I think I mentioned one day, sure, I don't know if I mentioned it with, with, with this item, is we watched a video with my nine o'clock shear that discusses the history of community Arabin. Uh, once upon a time when Jews used to always be forced into ghettos, they never need Arabin because there was a wall around them. Um, it's only in the 1500s where Jews were let out of their cage, so to speak, where there was a need to make community Arabin and every single Arab made was always under dispute. You see in the Chuvas so the Rishonim, there's always dispute. Never did an Arab go smoothly. The first community Arab in the history of the world that was undisputed was the Arab in Toronto. Don't laugh. It was the Arab in Toronto, not by Rav Price, Rav Grabert, who was before Rav Price. His Arab was 100% accepted. Only later on, when Rav Price wanted to expand it, only then did it, did it create a problem. Only then did it create a problem. So I, I decided that I'm going to try very hard to read up on Rav Grabert's Erev, since it is the first Erev that was undisputed, and it's our Erev, it's a Toronto Erev. I'm going to try to get the specifics of that Erev so that I could share it with the Oilam. I think we're learning Erev, and it would probably be interesting to learn about our very own Erev that we have. There wasn't a promise, even though, but I'm going to even, try. Even though we're not part of the nine o'clock shear? Even though, yeah. Okay. You, you, you have to, we're still the Ikrashir, right? Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. <laughs> but it would be very interesting. I, I, I know one place to start. Don't worry. Yossi says that to all his children. I, I say to all my wives. <laughs> you know, my, grandfa my grandfather, just as an aside, I once asked him, Zaidi, who's your favorite grandchild? And he said, whichever one is on my lap right now. <laughs> very good. <laughs> That reminds me of my shver. Whenever I would ask my shver how, how, how come he lived so long, how is he he would say, oh, because I was very machabed my shver. When my wife would ask him, he would say, because I was very machabed my father. And when our cousins would ask, he would always say, because I was very machabed my uncle. So it's all it's all on your perspective. Okay, so let's see what the Gemara says over here. Tan Rabban, Ketan my Rabban, Derek, which is Rabban. Oiz a tzurus a Pesach mikan. You make a tzurus a Pesach on one end, so two kairis, to two lechis and a kair. And on the other side, you do a lechi or a kair. And that would take care of your shusarab. So that's a tanakama. So the tanakama seems to say you can quite easily modify your shusarab to be able to carry. Of course, this will not be the maskona. We watched the introductory video that said a shusarab you could never carry in. The whole purpose of Ervin is things that are midaraisa considered a shusarab. But there are bon and we're geyser on them that you can't carry. That's what the Arab helps for. But of course, an Arab could never help for a, a Rishus Arabim that's a Deraisa. But so, and the Gemara will come to that conclusion. But right now, the Gemara thinks we're talking about a real Rishus Arabim. So, what about Hananya? Aymer Hananya says this Shiloh is actually a Machloikis, Beshamay and Besola. Beshamay Aymer, Oy said, Delas Mikan, the Delas Mikan. You actually have to put a door. It's not enough to have a door away. You actually have to have a real door. And the door has to be kept closed all the time. So it actually acts like a wall. You put a door on one end and a lechi and kari on the other end. Now, does this door have to close? It doesn't say. We, we might get more information about this later. So one side would be the door, the other side would be a lechi and kari. If I'm not mistaken, and I don't, I'm saying this out of Amaratsis, but if I'm not mistaken, the entrance to the 401 off of Bathurst Street and all the other streets that are on the Arif actually have a gate. If you ever noticed, there's a gate that was put up, uh, it's like a turnpike that could close the 401. When they actually do construction on the ramp, they actually close that gate to stop cars from traveling up that ramp. But if I'm not mistaken, that gate was put up as part of the Erev. I don't know, I'll have to do homework on it, but that's what someone once told me, that that gate was put there as part of the Erev because you need a Deles Mikan when you're separating from a Rosh Hashanah if it's Mufulish, if you have a 
Moving the foolish to Rishus Rabbim, you need a delus. Delus begun, the lechi vikor mikan. Frank to Gemara, Rishus Rabbim, Mima Arva, how could you even contemplate making an Erev in Rishus Rabbim? For Tanya, we learned, yes, you're Al-Kaid Omer Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda said a greater Chiddush than the original Chiddush in the Brisa. So let's see what the Brisa said, and then let's see what Rabbi Yehuda's greater Chiddush is. So Rashi says, yes, al Kane. The Ilmine Ayri, before the Brisa said the words Yeser al Kane, the Brisa was discussing the Boina Aliyah Mibayis Labayis Shebetnei Tzide Rishus Rabbim. You have a home on one side of Rishus Rabbim, you have a home on the other side of Rishus Rabbim, and then you make a bridge that goes across above the road surface. So it's on the second story, there's a bridge that grows across. We see this sometimes in tall office buildings, there'll be a bridge that goes across two towers of a hospital. There's usually a, a floor that allows you to transition from one building to the next. So here you have two two-story homes right across the street from each other in Rishus Rabbim. And the second floor, you made a bridge from the second floor of one home across the Rishus Rabbim to the second floor of the other home. The Chen Gishor HaMem Fulash Rishus Rabbim or bridges that open up to Rishus Rabbim to Shari Rabbi Yehuda the Taltule to say underneath those bridges so you basically it's the, it's the Rosh Hashanah Rabbim going underneath a bridge. Imagine Bathurst Street when you go under the overpass to approach Wilson. So you're, you're going under a bridge. They felt that under the bridge, you're allowed to carry there. You know why? We should be ticker yours precisely. We look at the roof on either side as if it creates an imaginary wall that goes down and creates now a wall around that space underneath the bridge. Pepera kol gagay seir. So that was the first halacha discussed, that if you have a, a, an underpass, such as the underpass that goes over Bathurst Street, just south of Wilson, underneath that overpass, even though it's a street, we look at it like it has four walls. And then the Bryce said, yes, sir, al Kain, Amar Rabbi Yehuda. The Buddha said, even the greater Kiddush. Even if you had a case where there was no ceiling, you know, when you go under the overpass of the 4-1, there's a ceiling above you. Even if there was no ceiling at all, rather, someone owned two homes, one on either side of the Rishus HaRabim. All you have to do is, you beat a lot of carry. Again, a picture is a thousand words. Let's look at the picture. Very simple picture. House A and House B. There's a street in between. By, by nature, there's already a wall on this side and a wall on this side. The exterior wall of each of the two homes create two walls to uh, enclose this street, at least by two walls. Then you put a lechi here and a lechi here, which creates that imaginary partition. Now you can carry in there. That's a massive chiddush because you don't really have a wall here and you don't have a wall here. Just a lechi is going to make that magic. I don't even know how it works because a lechi usually is only for a hacker that you're coming into a movie. Here that lechi somehow is going to create a wall, a huge chiddush. So it says, yes, sir, al came this greater chiddush that we learned in the b'risa, misha ha yuloi, shnei botem, shnei tzidei rishos ha-rabim, oisa lechi mikan, velechi mikan, oikari mikan, velechi mikan, venoisei, venoisei, and you're allowed to carry there. A massive, massive chiddush. V'chitema. So let's go back. So the Gemara, what was the Gemara trying to figure out? The Gemara was trying to say, a Rosh Hashanah doesn't make Erev, right? You can't make Erev. So what did they tell Rabbi Yehuda? We disagree with your Chiddush. Om Ruloi, they told him, Ein ma'arven Rosh Hashanah b'kach. You cannot make an Erev in Rosh Hashanah. So, so how could you suggest to me, on Omer Aleph, how you make an Erev in Rosh Hashanah? The Chachamim bumped Rabbi Yehuda right off and told Rabbi Yehuda, there's no such thing you cannot make an Erev in Rishos HaRabim. Now, if you want to say, no, the Chachamim never told Rabbi Huda that you could never make an Erev in Rishos HaRabim. They said, the Kach, your attempt to the Erev is no good. But no one said you could never make. If you're going to claim that you could make an Erev with doors so that it would at least stim it would at least him with one of the sheetas on Omer Aleph. So let's look back to the Machloikas quoted on Omer Aleph. The Tanakhama said, you need a Tursa Pesach Mikan, the Lechi Dekar Mikan. That wouldn't work. 
But Hanania said, according to the Bishamai, with a Delos you could do it. And according to Basil, with a Delos on one side you could do it. So you might you might have a problem with the Tanakama of the Brysa, but maybe according to the second Tana, who, who, which is Hanania, who quotes a Machoikis Bisham and Basil, maybe that you could do. Habadalsus me arva. So tomorrow that wouldn't make sense. Because we are Omar Rabba Bar Bar Barchano, Omar Bechanon, Yerushalayim, the city of Yerushalayim. If it wasn't for the fact that the doors of Yerushalayim are sealed at night, you'd be high for carrying it in Rishos So we need to analyze how is this a contradiction to that? Maybe our Bryce is also speaking about doors being closed. So let's analyze this a little bit carefully. According to Beishamai, that's the Delos Mikan, the Delos Mikan. Well, yeah, maybe maybe you have to close them. I don't know if it would be a kasha. But according to Basilo, that I said Delos Mikan, Velechi Vikari Mikan, for sure that would be a problem. Because in Yushalayim, even if the doors are closed, even if Basilo means to close the door, that's only on one side. But you only have a Lechi and a Kari on the other side. And the Gemara just tells us that by Yushalayim, not only do there need to be doors on both ends, they have to be closed. So that's going to be. Shver, you have a raya at least that Basil Shita would not fit. Taisa speaks about how it's also incompatible with the other Shitas, but I'm trying to keep it very simple. Yerushalayim is a trashy. Shalah, the main thoroughfare of Yerushalayim, Nechuvin Mishar Lashar, happens to cut straight through the city from one end to the other end, from one gate to the other gate. Uma foolish, and it's it open on both ends. The Yeshba Drisa Shishim Ribud, it has all of the Ingredients of a Rishus six hundred thousand people will go through there, and the Rach of Sheish Esrayama, and it's sixteen amos wide. I have not yet seen a street in the old city that was sixteen amos wide. Vil Mole Shenoylan Dal Soisel Vchalayla. If it wasn't for the fact that every night the walls to the city, the doors, the gates to the city were closed, Chayovin Aleha B'Shabes Mishum Rishus Rabbim. You would be Chayiv if you carried in the city of Yerushalayim. Because you're carrying in Rosh Hashanah Rabbin Daraisa. Avol, the Ilas Dalso is that that you close the doors, that that they seal the doors at night, that's Mishabila Kachotzer Shal Rabbin. That makes it Oyster Rosh Hashanah Rabbin into a Chotzer that many people share. Uma Arvin Eskula, and it creates an Erev and a, and a, and a wall around the entire Yushar line. The whole Shaman Shar Irvu, if they didn't make this Erev, have a Carmelis, it would be a Carmelis, and they wouldn't be Mechoyev. For it, and Arvi means Arab Chatseris. In other words, once there's walls around it and the doors are closed at night, then even without an Arab, uh, the Arab Chatseris, where they put food in someone's apartment, even without that, it at least becomes a Carmelis, so there would no longer be an issue that rises to carry. So that was one Raya that, that without the doors being closed, you couldn't possibly. Make a nerve on a Rosh Hashanah, and there's another case. Varmula Hani Avula the Mechuzah, the Avula of Mechuzah. Rashi says Sharei Ha'ir the doorways, the doors of the city of Mechuzah. Mechuvanim Zek Negedze. They're also on either end of a long street that cuts straight across the city. The Hayu Bashishim Ribu in Mechuzah there was also six hundred thousand people. Hani Avula the Mechuzah Il Moled Al Sosein in Alays. If it wasn't for the fact that they kept the doors to the city. Closed, it would also be a Rosh Hashanah. So, how could you say on the Aleph that there's a Shaila here how to make an Erev in a Rosh Hashanah? The only way to enclose Rosh Hashanah is with closed doors. And, that, and that's not the, any of the suggestions that we had on the Aleph. So, Amrabi Uda, Hachik Amar, this is what we really need to change the wording of the member on the Aleph. And it's as follows. The question is not how to actually make an air on Rosh Hashanah, because in fact you cannot do that. We're talking about a smaller street that only has the status of a Mavli, which anyway we derive as a Rosh Hashanah, but since it's open on either end to Rosh Hashanah, it's much more stringent than the standard Mavli that's closed on three sides. On that, we have this Machloikis, according to the first shita, 
And according to Hananya, it was a machloikus between Besham and Basil, whether you need to have an actual door on both ends, or if you only need a door on one end, and on the other end, you can use a lechi v'koyim. So let's just review what we learned today so far, because we're going to need it to get through the rest of today's blot. So we learned two things. We learned a machloikus between Rav and Shmuel about this movi, this movi that turns 90 degrees. Rav holds, it's like it's mefullish, meaning we look at it like it's open from end to end, from one Rishish Rabbim to the next, and therefore he mandates that you have a Tzuras HaPesach in the corner. That was the very first halacha that we learned. Let me see if I could find a picture of that to illustrate it. So that's this case over here. You had your Movi Mefullish. Rav said you need to have this Tzuras HaPesach here in the diagonal, and Shmuel said it's Kesosim no need to have that. You just need your lechi here, your lechi here, and everything else is fine. That was the first machlokes we learned about today. And then we learned another machlokes of Ketad Ma'arvin, no longer Deich Rishos Arabim. We changed it. How are you Ma'arv Amovi Hamafulish? And for that, there was a three-way machlokes. We had the first shita who held that you just make a, uh, that you just make a, a Tzuras Pesach Mikan and the Lechi Vikar Mikam, and Chananya brought down the Machlokes between Bisham and Basil, that's more stringent. Bisham and you have to have a door on either end, and you have to keep the door closed. And Basil said you only need a door on one end, and on the other end, the Lechi Vikar is enough. So those are the two uh, halachas we learned so far, and let's see how the Gemara proceeds. Now the Gemara wants to know, Itmar, who do we paskin like? Rav Omar, Hilchazok Etanakam. Rav holds Allah is like the Tanakama. So let's remind ourselves, the Tanakama said that you make a Tzuras HaPesach Mikan, the Lechi Vikar Mikan. If I have a Movi, Hama Fulish, that goes from one end to another end. So let's look at this picture here. Here you have a Rosh Hashanah here, a Rosh Hashanah here, and the Movi goes straight through. So this Movi Mefulish, Rav Paschal is like the Tanakama, that you need a Tzuras HaPesach on one end, and on the other end, either a Lechi or a Kair. That's a Rav Paskins. Itmar, Rav Omar, Hilchazok et Tanakama, Roshmul Omar, Halacha ki Chananya. The Halacha is like Chananya. And the question is, Chananya quoted a Machloikis. So who, who, who Shita in Chananya is Shmuel Paskins? Like, Yiboilu, the Chananya Aliba de Beisilo? Um, oh, so the Gomorrah is actually assuming that it's Hanania Libi de Basil, because naturally we're normally possible like Basil. And Basil said, on the one end you have a door, let's review inside what Basil said. He said, on the one end of this mobile, you need to have a door. Basil, Aimim, on one end you have a door, and on the other side you have a Lechi or a Kaya. So now the Gemara wants to know now that you say you need a door on one end, Sorech Linoil or Ain Sorech Linoil. Does this door have to be sealed? In Yerushalayim, which was a Rishus Harabim. The, the Brasha said very, very clearly that door must be kept closed. But this is not a Rishus Arabim. This is a Movi that's open to a Rishus Arabim. Beis Hillel said you need to have an actual door on one end. Does this door have to be closed? Tashma. Tomar Bida Mishmul. Enoi Tzorech Linoil. You do not have to close that door, unlike Yerushalayim. Bechein Amar Abmas Namar Shmuel. Enoi Tzorech Linoil. Ika Da Amri. There's another opinion. So now this is a much more powerful riot. This isn't just a theoretical machlaikis. I actually experienced exactly this case. I had a movie that was foolish open on either end to Rajus Rabbin. And Shmuel Paskin from me, I don't have to close the door. So this is a much stronger riot because this is a halacha lamaisa. Boy, my name they had a Shaila from Rabbanon, the same Shaila that Shmuel said, ain't Tzorech Linoel. They asked Rabbanon his opinion. Tzorech Linoel or ain't Tzorech Linoel. Omaluhu, Tochazi, go look. Hane Avulu de Narda, the doors of the city of Narda, they're stuck. The Timon al Palgai Bafra, they sunk into the ground and they you can't move them. A lot of people have gates to their homes and sometimes the terrain changes, things shift. And you can't even open the gate anymore because it's blocked by earth. The doorways to Nardo were left and they were not maintained. 
and earth built up around them, and now they were half opened, and you couldn't budge them. So you see, the Isle of the Novik Mar Shmuel, I saw Shmuel go in and out of those gates, so he knew that the gates were inoperable. The gates of Nardo was inoperable. Operable. And he didn't say, hey, if you have inoperable gates, guys, you have a problem in your city, you won't be able to carry in your city. He didn't say anything. So clearly, it wasn't a problem for Shmuel that the doors didn't close. So again, it's a psaka locha from Shmuel that the doors don't have to be closed. Omer of Kahana, that's not a riot. Because Hanach, those doors were partially closed. It's not shot that they were stuck in the full open position. They're stuck in the partially closed position. Maybe that's why Shmuel didn't have a problem with them. They weren't fully open. They were stuck in the partially open position. They were partly closed. So they impeded the flow of traffic. Maybe that's why Shmuel didn't have a problem with it. But if you have doors that could swing open, maybe in fact they have to be kept closed. Zok to Gemara Vaiter. He also Rab Nachman, when Rab Nachman came, he said, Omar, Panu He said, guys, in our door, you better fix these gates. Because if these gates can't close, you're not going to be able to carry there. So Rab Nachman, who, although Shmuel ignored this situation, Rab Nachman considered it considered it a serious situation. He told them they have to fix the doors. Lema Kasava Rab Nachman, from the fact that Rab Nachman said that they need to fix the doors, does that indicate that Tzorch Lino? Maybe that indicates that you actually have to close those doors. The Kmelois not arrive. Kibun the Ruuyos Linoil, Alpha Bisha in the noise. Could be he just wanted that the doors could be closed. If the doors cannot be closed, then we have a problem. It's considered open. But if the doors can be closed, they just happen not to be closed, but you're able to close them, that's important to Rav Nachman. So again, we don't have a riot that the door has to be closed. And it seems from the consensus of the Gemara that these doors do, actually do not have to be closed. They had in our door this, these two mavuas that intersected or that met each other at a 90 degree angle. And what happened was, is the Rav the Poisik was Machmer with two contradictory Chumras, the Chumra of Rav and the Chumra of Shmuel. And we'll get into the details of that in a moment. And this is based on the two Machloikas that we hazard over a couple of minutes ago. And Vatshrechu, Dalsois, they needed Dalsois. So how, they needed doors in the middle. Chumra de Rav, they, they, they were following the Chumra of Rav to Omar Tarosik Mafulish. If we remember, we had a Shalab in Rav and Shmuel. Shmuel held, you don't have to do anything in the center. Rav held, you needed a Tzur Pesach in the center. Because Rav held, that movie, since they connect at the, in the center, you have to treat them like Mafulish and they need the Tzur Pesach. And Shmuel said, Shmuel said, he paskined like Hananya. And if you remember, Hananya said that when you have a Mavi Mafulish, it can two Rishus Arabims, you need to have an actual door. So if you think about it, it's very funny because this movie that intersects at a 90 degree angle, according to Shmuel, you don't need anything at all because he holds that's kesosim. It's only Rav who holds that you need something there. And Rav says, all you need there is a Tursa Pesach. Yet here the Rav was machmer to have doors. Nobody holds you need doors. Rav, Shmuel holds you need nothing. Rav holds you need a Tursa Pesach. Shmuel holds in a different case, you need doors. If it's Mephulish, Rishish, Rabbim on both ends. So here you have a Chumrah that Sai Rav and Sai Shmuel would not agree with. Yet this Poisik held that you have to be so Machmer that you got to put doors in the center. Frank the Gemara, how could you say that? Um, which means you don't need doors. But Shmuel held a Chananya who says in Basil that you didn't have doors. But Shmuel holds in this case, you wouldn't need anything at all. You're right. So this is sounds, it sounds foolish. It sounds foolish that you should have such a Chumrah. You're more Machmer than Rav and you're more Machmer than Shmuel. Nobody holds you need to have such a Chumrah. 
do you ever go according to two chumris? For Tanya, we learned in a price it. Really, we pass in like Beisilo when the Beisilo argues with Beshamai. The Haroitza Lassus could give Beshamai. If you want to be extra machmer and pass like Beshamai, Oisa you could do. Could give Beisilo Oisa, or if you want to pass like Beisilo, you could do. But Mikule Beshamai, who Makila Beisilo, if you pick and choose the coolest of all the different Poiskim, Russia. That makes you to a Russia. Mikhumer Beshamai, Umachimer Beisil, but if you try to take both Chumris, all of Akos of Oimer, Haksil, a fool, a fool goes in the darkness. So if you consider this foolish, you're a foolish. You're also a fool. How could you pass in like two Chumras if the Brisa tells you that if you take the Chumras of Beshamai and the Chumras of Beshil, you're a fool. You must be consistent. If you pass in like Beshamai, stick with them for their Chumras and their Kulas. And you give a Kikuleyan, so, so before the Gemara extracts our problem from this price, the Gemara asks us, this price itself doesn't make sense. Because the very first line of the price says, the price of passes like Basil. And then the second line of the price says, if the Allah is like Hillel, what do you mean you could pass like Bishamah? So, you're going to look at it. Can Koydin Basco? Can Lacha Basco? A Basco came out and said, The Allah is like Basil. Once that Basco came out, you had no right to pass like Bashamai. You had to pass like Basil. But before I like Bashamai, beautiful, beautiful Kasha. Beautiful Kasha. And we're going to see in a second. The boy is saying, Hobo Lacha Basco. They're both after the Basco. And like what Mr. First said, Rabbi Yeshua, it's going according to Rabbi Yeshua, the Loy Mashkh Basco. You don't listen to a Basco. Or you could say another territory. What the Bryce is saying is when it comes to Bisham and Basil, since there was a Basco, Avada, you have to pass like Basil. But in other Machloikisin that you might find throughout Shas, like Machloikisin that we've encountered today, if you ever find where two or Tanoi might argue, or two of my right might argue. And Machloik is Bishamay Mesil, just like you found the Machloik is Bishamay Mesil. The Loch is Loyla Evet, Kikulu de Mar, Kikulu de Mar. Don't pick the coolest of two different people. But like the Chumr de Mar, the Chumr de Mar. And don't take the Chumr of two people. Ella, be, be, be consistent. Ella, Oi, Kikulu de Mar, Uke Chumr of it. Oi, Kikulu de Mar, Uke Chumr of it. Stick to one person. So that answers the price. But the Chumakim Kacha, the problem is here. How could we be so machmer to paskin in such a way where both Rav and Shmuel would not be machmer this way to have doors? According to Rav, you need a source of Pesach. According to Shmuel, you need nothing at all. So before we get to the Teretz, being that Rebbeir asked the Mori to Kasha about Torah, Levi Shemaimi, we need to understand a little bit. Because clearly, here we're not saying that you follow the Basko. I mean, here we're saying, at least on one sheet, you follow the Basko. Yet, yet we, we had in the other Gemaras, that Torah Leib So why why do you follow the Basco in some places in some places not? So Zok Tois is kind like a Basco. The Torah effect of this Maish no the Leikaim alone ke Basco the Rebbe Liezer Dazov in Perak Azov we did not listen to the Basco. Yet over here the Gemara suggests that you should listen to the Basco. So the Gemara not all Bascoels are created equal. The Shlom with the Hosum Leyotza el Lechvoidai the Basco where we said Torah Leib Shemaimi. That Basco didn't come to Paskin, it just came to the defense of Rabbi Eliezer to protect him. Because the like if you learn the Sugi there, you'll see. And therefore, there we say, Torah Rabbi. There, Rabbi Eliezer was making up Sak Kedeged Rabbi. The Torah tells us you follow the right. So surely you have to ignore a Basco that's telling us to do against what the rules of the Torah are of Achir Rabbi Lahatois. Adirabah, Basil have a ruba. Really, Basil was right. So Ma'ikra Adin, you're supposed to pass on like Basil. You don't need a Basco to tell me that. Ma'ikra Adin, I know you pass on like Basil. The only reason why we needed a Basco is because the Basco told us you stick to the rules of Acherab and Hatais. Ah, you think Beshamay are super sharp, and therefore maybe we should listen to them, even though they're not the Rive. The Basco said, no, stick to the default, continue. To follow the shita of the right. In fact, the Gemara of him, Toymar, and Cain, my comrade, Bishua, 
P. To Amar Ein Meshkichem Bebaskol. Our Gemara said that we're going to come to Yeshua calls Ein Meshkichem Bebaskol. Haloi Le Amar Rabbi Shua El Abaskol Rabbi Lozer. You're telling me that the only reason why Rabbi Shua suggested to ignore the Baskol is because by Rabbi Lozer it was a Rabbi Negra Yochid. So over here, how could you say that? How could you say over here Ein Meshkichem Bebaskol? Bishloimer Deloi Bishemay Mi Mashma the Ein Lashkiach Klal Bishum Baskol. You can say that. Rabbi Shua didn't mean I'm not following the Basco there because of Roy, because it is. No, Rabbi Shua meant you never, ever, ever listen to a Basco, period, uh, exclamation point. Okay, so now we have an issue. We passed about this 90 degree Mavi that you need to have doors. The problem is, according to, according to Shmuel, you should need nothing at all. And according to Rav, the most you should need is, is a Tzurus of Pesach. So Mikol and Lakasha, why are we making a contradictory psak and being super machmer. Omar Nachma Yitzchak, Kula Karav Avdua. Really, we paskin completely like Rav. Oibazoi, according to Rav, it's considered sosum. I shouldn't need anything at all. Omar Avuna Marav, Halacha Avein Marim Kain. Oh, but with Rav paskin, when Rav paskin, like the Tanakama, that you only need. A tzuras of Pesach, he he she said the halach is like them, but the ein moirin kain ela kechanani the void also is really Rav himself also agrees to Shmuel that you need doors, and therefore we're not passing like Rav and like Shmuel. It's not a chumra Rav and a chumra Shmuel. It's it, we're being consistent by sticking with Rav, who says that two movies that that meet at ninety degree angles require some type of fix, and the fix required is what Hanani said. That you need to have a door. Um, I don't know if we should go weiter. I just wanted to get to the end of this kasha, so I think we could we could stop here. I think we could stop here because it's it, it, the, the what time tomorrow morning? Um, what what time do we learn Sunday morning? Akiva, can you help us with that? I think we um, if we're going to the eight o'clock minion, so normally six.